Hi, I'm Dr. Zoya from Triquan Aesthetics and Skin Clinic, and today I'm going to be talking to you about what is in your filler. So have you actually ever wondered what is in your dermal filler? So today I'm going to break down all the different types of filler and the one that is most commonly used and the safest. So there are three main types. You've got your permanent fillers, your semi-permanent fillers and your temporary fillers. So your permanent fillers are things like silicone implants. So these were traditionally used back in the 80s and 90s where you would actually have implants placed in areas like your lips or your chin to help create volume. So these were quite permanent. You can't remove them other than going in for surgery again. And the reason these fell out of favor was for a number of reasons. So firstly, you could get an infection if one popped, for example. The second reason why they fell out of favor was because essentially, as you're aging, say for example in your lip area and you have a silicone implant in there, your lip is losing volume, changing shape because of all the different changes going on in your facial structure. Your lips aren't going to sit the same. So that silicone will start looking a little bit off balance and look a lot more obvious in the face. Similarly, with the chin area, for example, that implant is going to regress as your chin area gets less volume with age. And when you then start developing things like jowls, etc., proportionally, it will all start looking off balance. So now there's a very low number of people that get implants placed, especially silicone implants. So the next type are semi-permanent fillers. So these are things like PMMA, calcium hydroxy apocyte or PLLA. So these types of fillers are semi-permanent. So these fillers are injected into certain locations across the face and they will stay there like all types of fillers do, but you cannot dissolve them or reverse them. But what they do do, however, is gradually fade over time. And this can be anywhere between six months to two years. So if you didn't like the result or there was any sort of complication or trouble with the result, then you could be stuck with it for up to two years. Saying that, these types of fillers are really good at stimulating collagen and doing other things. So these fillers are now being used in different formulations for different indications. And then finally, we have our temporary fillers. So these are most commonly hyaluronic acid dermal fillers. So these are by far the most popular form of dermal filler treatment and are the safest. What is hyaluronic acid? Hyaluronic acid is essentially a sugar. It's what we call a polysaccharide. This is a technical chemistry term, but essentially what it is is long, long chains of hyaluronic acid that then curl up together like when you're eating spaghetti or something and they all mush up together and they form these natural bonds between them. So they're communicating with each other naturally and they form a connection and then they create a bit of structure, draw water and hydration towards them so they can lubricate areas, they can add moisture to areas, they can stimulate collagen and elastin in certain areas like the skin. In dermal fillers, hyaluronic acid has been made in a synthetic form and it has been formulated so that it can create structure. So you have chains of hyaluronic acid and those chains are then cross-linked with something called BDDE. This is a cross-linking agent and what this does is create structure in that hyaluronic acid. So the more BDDE that is in the chains or in the hyaluronic acid uh, composition, the stronger or thicker the product. So you want to place a thick product where you're trying to mimic bone. So for example, your cheeks or your chin. For your lips, for example, they're a very soft area. So you want a filler that has very little BDDE. So it's very soft and thin. So it mimics more of your lip texture. Saying that, however, there are over 200 different brands of dermal filler out there, particularly for hyaluronic acid dermal fillers. And I would say most of them are absolute trash. There's only probably maybe five brands that are actually very good, have the clinical evidence behind them and the robust chemistry that we're talking about. So when I spoke to you about what natural intrinsic hyaluronic acid is, so what we have in our own bodies, that is made up of lots of long chains. So you want a dermal filler 
to be placed in your body that also has long chains. And not all brands do that. There are certain brands that have lots of short chains, so you wanna steer away from that. You wanna go for a brand that has long chain hyaluronic acid because that will be the most natural. The other thing is you wanna use a brand that uses the least amount of that cross-linking agent called BDDE because that is not found naturally in our own bodies. And that's the thing that takes a bit longer to break down. So you want to have a product that has very little BDDE cross-linking it and utilizes those natural connections between the long chains of hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid breaks down naturally in our own bodies because we have hyaluronic acid in our skin, joints, eyes. So we have an intrinsic enzyme that slowly breaks it down over time. So the hyaluronic acid dermal filler that is placed in your skin or, or, or down to bone will then also be broken down by that same enzyme over time. So you wanna make sure that there's very little BDDE in your dermal filler. Thanks for watching, I hope you found that useful. I know it was quite detailed, but you know, if you really wanna know what's in your filler, then that's the video to watch. Um, if you have any other questions, please drop a comment below and please like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.